If I told you that the following photos that you're about to see is shot with a $7,000 camera and a $3,000 lens, would you believe me? If you were the one telling me that and showed me those photos, I would say absolutely. But is it actually the case though? I remember 10 years ago when I purchased one of my absolute favorite phones, that is the iPhone 5. And the reason that I've kept this phone is because I loved the design of this thing. I love the entire form factor and how it felt and also the camera capabilities of this phone because I remember when this was launched, 10 years ago, it was the shit. I know, there's probably gonna be a lot of you saying like, well, Android and uh, Samsung and uh, HTC had better versions of the cameras than the iPhone 5. <laughs> well, yes, it was probably the case, but when this phone arrived, I remember that there was a lot of people switching from Android phones to the iPhone 5. This is what it looks like when I am recording with the iPhone 5 and the iPhone 15 Pro put next to each other. And I mean, like, of course you can see the big difference that has happened in the last 10 years with these cameras. And especially in the dark departments, looking at the iPhone 5, you can see that the background here is very contrasty. It's almost no details. Meanwhile, on the 15 Pro, there's a lot of details in the background. But honestly, I think that the iPhone 5 is doing a really good job of you know, giving you an image that you could actually use if you were to shoot a video and if you need to shoot or document a vlog or whatever it might be. To think that we had the possibility to do time lapses built into the actual phone and then shoot videos, we could take photos, and you have HDR, you have self timer. Like there was a bunch of things with this phone that made it the high end phone that it was back in the day. But now, 10 years later, we have the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is almost twice the size of the iPhone 5, but it's also incredibly good in the camera department. Since I've already tested the video capabilities of the 15 Pro, I knew that the cameras are good and you can do some really cool stuff with it, especially since you can shoot in a log color profile as well. And if you're interested in getting some LUTs for the iPhone 15 Pro, I got you covered in the link in the description. But I wanna take some photos with this phone to see how good it actually is when it comes to computational photography and if you can actually tell a difference between this and a $10,000 camera setup. All right, let's have a look at the first batch of photos and you're gonna guess if it's shot with a $7,000 camera and $3,000 lens or an iPhone 15 Pro Max. Let's go. You gotta give me the answer. How many did you get right from all those? I've also tried to edit these photos to make them look as similar as possible when it comes to the exposure and colors and all that stuff. I decided to take the photos in two different modes. And the first one is raw, mainly because we wanna maintain the image data and all that stuff. But then I also went into portrait mode to get the depth of the shot that I was taking because that is one of the cool features with the 15 Pro that I really think can help a lot of people actually use this as a dedicated camera. The downside with taking the photos in the portrait mode is that you're not getting the raw data. You're getting a image that is processed within your iPhone and you can do some adjustments to it, but most of the time it's gonna be like fixed and dead on as is in camera. One of the advantages though, when you're shooting in portrait mode is that you can adjust the focus point after the fact that you've taken the shot, which is sick. So looking at this shot, for example, if we're going to edit, I can set the focus to be in the back and have the crane to be the focus point. But if I wanna have the Toyota logo, I can just switch that. And you can also adjust the aperture of the background blur to make it look the way that you want it to look. Of course, you can see that if you take it down too far, for example, like F1.4, it will look a little bit weird when it comes to the edges. But if you have it at somewhere like F3.2, you can almost don't tell that this is taken with a phone. 
which is sick. Here's another example for you. We have my car that is the subject in this shot. And then I can go in, I can drag down the F stop. And then you can see that the cranes in the background is getting a little bit of a blurry. But the cool thing is that if you want to have everything in focus, you can just turn things off. And then all of a sudden, you have a shot where everything is in focus. You can see the background, there's no blur. But you can also go in and then you can just like, eh, I want to have back. I want to bring the back the blur. And the subtleness of the computational bokeh, I guess we can call it, is for me something that I think is freaking amazing because it looks so incredibly good in most of the shots. Of course, there will be a couple of shots where you can see that it's like blurring it out weird. For example, in this shot, you can see that if I drag down the aperture to like 1.4, there's some weird blur going on around this yellow thing that we got here. But most of the time, it actually looks pretty good. And you can just give it a subtle blur, something like this, and your eye is going to be drawn towards the car. And then you might actually be able to fool people that this was taken with a real camera in a sense. When you're shooting in portrait mode, I do think it looks freaking amazing in most of the shots that I've gotten, but there is occasions where I feel like, eh, you know, this is not gonna cut it. When I've been taking regular photos though, that is not shot in the portrait mode, I do think you can more clearly see that it is taken with the phone. You do have some great possibilities to edit it though, because you have all the raw data that you might need to edit the photo, but I don't think that I would actually go out and shoot in RAW with my phone because in that sense I could just take my bigger camera if I know that I'm going to take RAW photos. There will be occasions where you just have your phone and that is going to be the tool that you might want. But we are getting to a point where these phones, and I'm not saying just Apple and iPhone because we have Sony, we have Samsung, we have Oppo, we have Huawei, but they are getting to a point where the computational photography is actually going to be a contender towards real cameras. All right, let's have a look at the next batch of photos and see if you can guess. I don't know about you, but looking at those photos, it is freaking amazing of how good the iPhone 15 Pro Max has become and computational photography in general. I think for me, one of the biggest things with smartphones becoming this good is that it lowers the barriers of entry which means that anyone can pick up a phone nowadays and actually start to take photos or become a videographer. You don't need to invest into multiple different super expensive lenses. You can actually learn the basics and foundations of making videos and taking photos just by using the smartphone, which is amazing. But would I actually choose this over my Sony A1 though? Absolutely not. But on the flip side, an iPhone is easy to bring with you and it's going to help me to create content on the go. It might be more than sufficient for most of the things that I do on a daily basis. And if you've been watching some of my latest videos, I have actually been using the iPhone to shoot a lot of the stuff in those videos as well. And there has been absolutely no one that has commented about the image quality being bad compared to my mirrorless cameras. So do you think that phones are going to take over for mirrorless cameras in say five years? Or do you think that the time frame is going to be, nah, they will never take over from mirrorless cameras? I would love to hear your opinion on this because it's a very interesting topic. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe because that would be highly appreciated. And, uh, oh, give it a thumbs up as well, man. I will see you in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,